Chris Weidman has released his actual x-rays that he sustained in that really nasty and severe tibia fracture that he had versus Uriah Hall at UFC 261. Being an orthopedic surgeon, I wanted to go through those x-rays with you so you can understand what we look for when we look at these x-rays and how we treat them and think about the road ahead for Chris Weidman. So let's start by looking at his pre-injury x-ray and go from there. So if we look at it, he, sent, he showed one x-ray of his pre-injury films or the x-rays that were taken before he had surgery. So if we look at it, we would call this a lateral view or a view from the side of the leg. And the way that us orthopedic surgeons would describe this by looking at it is we would call this a displaced fracture with shortening. As you can see, both bones are fractured, both the tibia and the fibula, the tibia being the large weight-bearing bone and the, and, and, and the long bone, which is much more important. But we can see we clearly have a situation when we, when we look at this, that this would need be indicated for a surgery or operation to stabilize the tibia so we can immediately start the rehab and start placing weight on this bone with stabilization. So let's talk about what we do and how we do that operation when we're in the operating room. So let's use his post-operative x-rays as an example so we can see it as I'm kind of talking you guys through this. Let's go first to the AP view or the view that's going from the front to the back that includes the tibia. Um, and you can see the top of the nail. So if we look at it here, now we can also see his knee joint. So as a side point, we can see Chris Weidman has some arthritis in his knee. You can see a bone spur or what we call an osteophyte on the outside part of the knee or lateral aspect of the knee, but that's just a side, side point. So looking at this view, we can see the nail is placed down the intramedullary canal of the tibia. So as orthopedic surgeons, when we're doing this operation, the way that we enter this nail is through the knee. And what we look for is our entry point is gonna be on the inside or medial aspect of the lateral tibial spine. So that's our starting point that we're looking for that we know is gonna give us good access to the tibial canal. So that's where we would make our introduction hole. And then what we do is after we make that introduction hole, we, we place a wire down all the way across the fracture and start reaming and opening up the canal wider and wider and wider so we can place a intramedullary nail as big as possible. And the reason we want the intramedullary nail to be as big as possible is the bigger it is, the stronger it is and less likely that it's supposed to, that, that, that it would break, okay? So let's go lower now, um, or actually let's go to the lateral view that's still up on the top of the leg. We can see um, we cross-reference, we can see the nail going down, and again, we've noticed that there's one screw interlocking, and that screw is going between bone, nail, and bone. So it's interlocking bone and, and placed within a hole of the nail. And you can see there's only one screw there. Typically, we place two screws up there, okay? Um, pay attention to what the hole looks like. The hole that the screw is actually in, you can see the one on the bottom is a circle, and the one on top is an oval. So they've placed a screw through the oval, which means they wanna dynamize the nail. And we'll get through that, we'll talk through what that means in a second. Okay, so let's go lower now. We'll go back to the AP view. We can see the nail is going across the fracture site. This fracture site seems to be lined up pretty dang good. On the tibia, on the fibula, you can still see that there's a fracture there, but because the tibia has been well aligned and because the fibula fractures in the shaft or the uh, middle portion of the bone, we do not need to stabilize that because it will heal on its own as long as the tibia is stable. So looking down here, we can see two screws being placed underneath the fracture site. That's very common, okay? And if we go and now look at the lateral view or the side view, and this is a side view, is we can see that the fracture has been well aligned on the back portion. In the front, we do have a little piece of bone on the tibia, we call a butterfly fragment. We can see there's also a butterfly fragment on the fibula. However, overall, the alignment is good. Had a question, you know, is it a big deal that you have this butterfly fragment? Not necessarily. Um, as long as you can get three out of those four cortices aligned, we're pretty confident that this would heal itself. So it's likely that bone would start to callus and incorporate into this butterfly fragment, or even if it does not incorporate, it, should, it would not be a big deal in terms of the stability of, of that, okay? So going back to the screw, so why one screw above, two screws below? So the orthopedic surgeon taking care of Chris Wyman wanted to dynamize this nail, or basically allow, allow this fracture to collapse over time if there was any gap. So if we look at the fracture site itself, and we're, I'm looking down at the lateral view down low. 
it looks, if we, if we judge everything across that line, maybe there's a slight gap, but overall I would say the alignment is pretty dang good. Um, play, now think about this now, looking back up at this lateral x-ray on the tibia, if, if the hole that the screw is placed in is oblong, when Chris Weidman starts to place weight on his tibia, there's a, there's a chance that the tibia nail can, can, can collapse over the fracture because that screw is in an oblong hole, that screw is not stuck within the nail. If it was placed through a circular screw hole, it would not allow the, the nail to move. So because it's in its oblong hole, we would, this, is, we would allow, this would be allowed to dynamize or collapse or basically compress across that fracture site to allow it to compress a little bit more. So, so we kind of went over some things. So that's the way that we enter through the tibia. That's why it's one screw above, two screws below and hope you guys had a little bit more understanding of what we look for when we look at these preoperative x-rays and post-operative x-rays. I think overall the surgeons did a great job and hopefully this will allow Chris Weidman to immediately start placing some stable weight on his leg and have a quick recovery. All the best to Chris Weidman. If you guys enjoy this video, uh, make sure to check out my other injury on Chris Weidman's injury and other UFC and sports injury videos and we'll see you guys here next time.